You never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's why perfecting your first input delay is key to a great page experience. Isn't it frustrating when you're trying to browse a site or use an app or just watch a video? See what I mean? Delays interrupt us. They break up our thought process and make it harder to focus or just complete our goals. That's why it's so important to make sure the people using our site have as few delays as possible. One of the ways that page experience helps reinforce this idea is through the metric first input delay or FID. FID is a new web API that you may have heard of last year as it was a part of the inaugural group of core web vitals. First input delay measures how long it takes in milliseconds for your site to react after someone interacts with it. It's like when they click on a button or if they tap on a text input. That means that we're measuring the delay in processing data and interactions, not the time it actually takes to process that data. You can think of it as how long it takes for your page to feel like it's interactive. It's being responsive to the user the very first time that they use it. And just like every part of page experience, each and every one of the URLs on your site are scored on first input delay independently, directly based off of the actual users using your site. Your homepage may have fantastic values, but your product page or articles could be a little bit far from perfect. Regardless of how any page is performing though, neither result impacts how another page is performing on page experience. Every URL is an island. However any of your pages are scoring, you can be sure that the numbers that you see reflect what users are actually experiencing. That's because the FID scores are coming from the monthly Chrome user experience report. You can read more about this report in the links below. Now that we have some idea as far as what FID is, how do we go about finding out how your pages are actually doing? Since FID is inherently about how your site reacts to interactions, it requires real users to get an accurate measurement. As a result of this, you can only really rely on user measurements that come from real world users, either via your own analytics or the ones that you have the ability to access inside of the core web vitals report section of the search console. If you haven't already, you'll need to create a free account to access the Search Console, but I highly recommend it. You will get some invaluable information about how your site is performing with page experience, as well as a lot of other foundational pieces to creating fantastic modern websites. You can quickly check out how your pages are performing with PageSpeed Insights. This is a hosted online version of the same Lighthouse tool that's a part of the Chrome DevTools. It shows you how your pages are performing in a test environment that's configured to be around the connection speed and device performance that's going to be average for a web user today. Your URL needs to be online for over a month in order to be included in the Chrome user experience report. If it has been, you can see the actual Core Web Vitals results directly. So you've got a number. Now what? Well, like all of Core Web Vitals inside of page experience, there's no such thing as passing or not passing. These are all used as guides. Search is using them to create relative performance differences between URLs to see how they're performing against one another. Generally speaking, a good goal is to have about 75% of your site's visitors have a first input delay of less than 100 milliseconds. 100 milliseconds has long been considered the point at which people perceive user interfaces as behaving instantaneously. Anything in the 100 to 300 millisecond range is starting to become problematic and anything beyond 300 milliseconds is a noticeable delay and will likely cause a worse experience for your users. One thing worth mentioning is you are not guaranteed to have an FID value. Since it's inherently based off of a user interaction, if your page doesn't have anything to interact with or people just don't ever click on buttons or inputs, there won't be an FID value recorded. If your pages are new or your URLs haven't been included inside of the Chrome user experience report, you can still figure out what your FID results are just takes a little bit more effort. Like I mentioned before, all of the field data in page experience comes from your actual real world users. That means that we can figure out the FID ourselves using the same APIs. In order to do this, we need to add a little bit of JavaScript to our page. All of the core web vitals are available to us via JavaScript APIs, specifically through performance observers. These observers give us an event or list of events that match the type of performance events that we're interested in. In this case, we're going to be looking for first input. Once the browser determines a first input has happened, it will execute the function that we pass it, passing us the list of events that match what we've requested. Though first input will likely only ever have one event, the performance observer always passes us a list of events to our callback, so our code iterates over the responses by calling get entries. For every entry, we look at the processing start and subtract the start time. The difference lets us know how long the first input delay was. You can take these numbers and send them up to your own analytics infrastructure to start to get a good idea as to what our FID results are going to look like. 
you're having a hard time bringing down some of your results, tracking in your own analytics can let you do a much more detailed data analysis. You can look for patterns such as user location, device type, or other bits of information that may not be as obvious to compare and contrast on the official page experience results. It is important to note, however, that while these are close and potentially identical values to the FID results, there are a number of edge cases that could potentially make it slightly different. You can read more about the nuances of this at the link below. Do you have 100% of your users below 100 milliseconds? That's amazing. Let us know your secrets in the comments below. But if you're anything like me, you'll have at least a little bit of work to do. So from a high level, there are a few things to know about first input delay issues. First is defer, delay, and delete JavaScript. By definition, any delay that is occurring is going to be related to JavaScript that is running on your page. All of the code on your page runs in the same thread by default. That means that the browser can only do one single thing at a time. So if a bit of code takes longer than expected, everything is blocked, even actions that people using your site may be trying to do. This could be that you're just having a large chunk of JavaScript that's being parsed or loaded when the page is initially loaded up. An event handler could be blocking something on heavy, or it's just slow for some reason. Too much code or is trying to run at once or any other things could be happening that are just making the whole site slower in general. If you're seeing issues with first input delay, check if you are loading too much JavaScript. Anything larger than 200 kilobytes is probably pretty large. If it is, it'd be a great idea to check out code splitting. This is a feature built into all modern JavaScript bundlers that allows you to split up code into smaller chunks and make sure that you're not blocking the rest of your page from reacting to users' input. You can learn more about code splitting in the links below. After splitting, any code that isn't essential for page load should be loaded using the async or defer attributes on their script tag. By using defer, you're telling the browser that the script is not going to change the layout of the page, so it shouldn't block the rendering of the page while it's being loaded or parsed. Async is a lot like defer, only it takes it a step further. It says to not wait on any other scripts. Using the async attribute tells the browser to execute your code without blocking on any other script beforehand. While we're already digging into the source code, be sure to be on the lookout for code that can just simply be deleted. It can be easy to accidentally include polyfills or workarounds long after they're actually needed. Often, the first interaction a user has with a page is going to be something at the top of your page, like things like a menu button or a search input, things like that. But if you're having issues with first input delay but aren't really sure why your score is what it is, a great idea is to start tracking the elements on your page that are having their delays being measured. If we look at the code snippet we were working on before, we also have access to APIs off of that same entry object. Specifically, I like to look at entry.target. This lets us know the element that we were interacting with whose delay is what's being measured. This can be really helpful if you have a large number of links, buttons, or other clickable, tappable elements on your page, but aren't quite sure as to which one it is that's dragging your scores down. Once we track what target is often associated with people who are having a slower first input delay, you can start to dig into your site's code to understand what events are tied to it and any listeners that may be attached to it. Another thing to look into is breaking up long tasks. Even if your code doesn't need to be split up, your tasks may still need to be. Tasks are just things that your code is doing. It could be laying out your web app, downloading state, or reacting to user input. A long task is anything that takes longer than 50 milliseconds to complete. If you're having issues with FID, then looking at your long tasks is a great starting place to see where improvements could potentially be made. Long tasks are actually highlighted in the Chrome DevTools. If you want to start looking for these on your user devices to build up a correlation between page experience results and long tasks in the field, you can actually programmatically access them just like we looked at the first input event before. We create a performance observer, then observe the long task type. From there, we can iterate over every instance to look into each attribution. This will give us a bit of insight into the functions that may be long running. DevTools is definitely a much better developer experience, but this API allows you to collect this information from your users in your own analytics, so you can track down correlations that may be otherwise hard to find in your local dev setup. Once you've found a long-running task, the next step is going to try to break it up into smaller asynchronous functions. This can be as simple as wrapping code into set timeouts or request animation frames, uh, but always the specifics depend on your specific situation. You can read more about the techniques you can utilize to break up long tasks in the links below. In general, improving first input delay comes down to optimizing the when, where, and why of the JavaScript on your site. You want to try to reduce its usage to the minimum needed to maximize your site's potential. Page experience is new, but the ideas behind it are solid and user-focused. If you can get great results, then the visitors on your site will be all the happier for it. 
There's still quite a bit to cover with page experience, but we're running out of time for this video. So make sure to share any questions you have on Twitter or in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be back soon to dive into yet another part of page experience. Thanks. See you soon. Mm -hmm.